SeekBuilder is LaserGene's application for sequence editing, annotation, and map creation, as well as for automated virtual cloning and primer design. In this video, I'm going to briefly take you through each of the views that SeekBuilder offers and point out a few of the key features in each view. Before we get started on the views, let's cover a few of the basic things you need to know about SeekBuilder. The Seek Builder application window is divided into panes. So you can see on my screen right now I have two panes. The top one here is showing the sequence view, and the bottom pane is showing the feature list view. You can control whether you want to display the panes horizontally, as I have here, or you can show them vertically side by side. To remove a pane, you just double click on the divider bar like this. And if I'd like to add one back, I can select Window, Vertical Split to add a vertical pane or window horizontal split which will add another horizontal pane. As you'll notice each pane has a curtain which is this part here and the curtain can be hidden by selecting view close curtain. Uh, but what the curtain allows you to do is control what is shown in the pane. You can choose what view is shown by selecting any of them like the linear map and you can also choose what specific content is shown for that view and we'll get more into that later. Also, just to mention it, all of the views in SeekBuilder are synchronized so that any changes made in one view are automatically reflected in every other view. Now if you come up with a layout of the application window that you like and you want to use it as your default layout, you can do that really easily just by selecting View, Save Layout as Default Template and that will cause SeekBuilder to use your layout for every new SeekBuilder document. And that includes not only just the layout, but also the information displayed in the view, such as which restriction enzymes are displayed and whether translations or ORFs are on or off. So now that we've covered those basics, let's talk about the views. The sequence view displays your nucleotide or protein sequence at the residue level. And in addition to the actual sequence, you can display features, ORFs, restriction enzymes, and translations. And all of those items are controlled by the selections you make here in the curtain. For example, if I open up the Features Displayed folder, you can see that right now I'm only displaying CDS and repeat region features. But if I also wanted to display miscellaneous features, I could just select this box, and now those are displayed as well. Enzymes can be displayed on your sequence in several different ways, and this is true for every view. Um, one way is to filter enzymes by using a selector. And as you can see right now, I'm only displaying unique enzymes. But if I uncheck that box and select 5' overhang, for example, now I'm only displaying enzymes that leave a 5' overhang when they cut. You can also display enzymes by drilling down through this alphabetical list and simply selecting them individually. Any item can be removed from this view simply by clicking on the icon to the left of the item and dragging it back to the curtain. You can also rearrange the order that items are displayed by clicking and dragging it to where you want it to be. The feature list view displays all of the defined features for your sequence, and these can either be predefined features from another source, such as GenBank, user-defined annotations that you create, or features created in another LaserGene application. You can sort the feature list by name, position, or type simply by clicking one of these checkboxes here. You can also search the feature list by selecting Edit, Find, and notice that feature list is selected here under search options. You can enter in any string that you want to search for and then SeekBuilder will search all of the qualifier fields for each feature in your project. The comment view is simply a place to enter some descriptive text or notes about your sequence. If the sequence you're using is from GenBank as this example is then this is where the text of the GenBank entry is displayed. But you can also click anywhere in this view and simply type in your notes. The linear map view will display a linear map of your nucleotide sequence. From here you can show enzymes, ORFs, and features against the ruler that represents your sequence. To reposition items on the map, 
first double click the item to select it and then you can click and drag it to where you want it to be displayed. If you're going to be printing the linear map or copying and pasting it into another application, you may also want to change the layout of the map. By default, SeekBuilder tries to fit the map into one standard page without breaking it up, but if you'd like to break it into groups, you can just select File, Page Layout, and then increase the number of groups per page. So as you can see now, my linear map is broken up into two separate sections. The circular map view displays a circular map of your nucleotide sequence. From here you can display enzymes and features against the circular ruler that represents your sequence. By default the title of the map comes from your sequence name, but you can change that uh, just by selecting format, circular map title, and then you can change it here. You may want to use the circular map as a graphic in a presentation or paper, and you can do that by copying and pasting. To copy the circular map as a vector graphics file, um, just select Edit, Copy as Picture, and then you're ready to paste it into the other application. To move an item, um, such as this enzyme label, you just double click to select it, and then you can click and drag it to wherever you want it to be. Features can be moved in the same way to fit your vision of how you want the map to look. So you just double click a feature here to select it, and then you can click and drag it to where you want it to be displayed. If you want to change the color or style of a feature, you can do that just as you would in any view by selecting the feature and then selecting features, edit feature style. And from here you can change the weight, color, and shape of the feature. Um, for example, I'll change this repeat region feature um, so that it now shows up in red instead of yellow. The primer design view allows you to design and analyze primers for your sequence. Typically, before accessing this view, you would select the region of sequence you want to amplify. So I'll select the sequence associated with this feature here in the linear map, and then I can either select Priming, Create Primer Pairs, or just click on the primer design view from the curtain. I'll click OK for SeekBuilder to start the primer pair search. And now I can see the primer design view with my top strand primer displayed here. The primer design view is divided into three panes. The top pane here displays the base level nucleotide sequence, the selected primer sequence, as well as restriction sites, translations, and features. And again, all of these items are controlled here from the curtain. The middle pane shows primer binding sites, as well as the most stable conformation of dimers, pair dimers, and hairpins. The bottom pane displays the list of primer pairs discovered by your search, and in this case I just searched for one pair, although I could have adjusted the parameters to find more. For each pair, the product length, melting temperature information, and a quality score are displayed. From the top pane here, you can introduce a new restriction site, or introduce a codon change or mutation by using these tools up here at the top of the window. You can also edit your primer sequence just by clicking on it and typing over it. And notice that any changes you make here are reflected immediately in the other panes as well as in all of the other SeekBuilder views. So by changing this G to an A for example, you can see that there are no longer any stable dimers uh, here in the middle pane and all of the other information such as um, melting temperature and product length have been updated as well. The primer list view displays the results from all of the primer searches you've done for the current project. For each primer pair, the primer sequence, PCR product length, and melting temperature are displayed. The current column shows you which pair is currently selected and displayed in the primer design view. By expanding each pair, you can see additional information about each individual primer within the pair, including the primer length, its melting temperature, and its delta G value. Notice that this view is set up like a spreadsheet, so you can easily sort it by clicking on any of these column headers. The minimap view displays your nucleotide sequence on a smaller scale and in relation to restriction enzyme cut sites. Each row shows the cut sites for a particular enzyme along the sequence. Right now I'm only displaying unique enzymes, so we're seeing just one cut site per enzyme. 
but let's turn off the unique filter and then turn on the filter for blunt cutters and now we can see some difference in the frequency of cut sites. You can sort the data in the minimap by clicking on any of these column headers. You can sort by name, frequency, and clicking on the column header for the ruler will sort by the enzymes that cut the closest to the existing selection. So if I select uh, the range of sequence associated with this feature here in the linear map, and then click on the column header for the ruler, you can see that the enzymes up at the top cut very close to my selection. The site summary view displays a table of the currently displayed restriction enzymes and their cut sites on your nucleotide sequence. As you can see, for each enzyme, the frequency of cut sites as well as the position of each cut site is listed. Absent sites are always listed together at the top of the list. You can sort this table by clicking on any of the column headers. And if you'd like to see the length of the fragment between cut sites, you can select Show Fragment Sizes here in the curtain. And the fragment length is then displayed after each position in parentheses. That should give you a basic overview of each of SeekBuilder's views and some of the features they offer. For questions or additional information about SeekBuilder or any of our products, please visit our website where you can learn more or contact us directly for assistance.